Hello and welcome to my video about Cockney rhyming slang where we are going to learn about the Cockney accent, where the term Cockney comes from, a little bit about its history, plus the Cockney language itself and how to phonetically pronounce Cockney with some exercise slides. Right then, as I read this out there are subtitles below just in case you haven't a didgeridoo what I'm on about and at the same time a Cockney converter at the top for the subtitle Cockney text in green as well as the graphical display to my side and if I pull this off it will be a bleeding miracle. Because of my accent I often get mistaken for a Cockney and although my old pot and pan was a Londoner I come from the south coast of England some 60 miles from London so to me I've got a Brighton accent mind you since I was a dustbin lid people have thought I was a Cockney which I must get from the old pot and pan. Anyway, in honour of me dad, I thought I'd do a video about Cockney rhyme and slang. Dad, as I understand it, was a true Cockney because he was born in the East End part of London, within the sound of the Bow Bells. That, me old fruit, is within the hearing distance of the St Mary Le Bow Church Bells. Over time, Cockney seems to have come to mean all Londoners, or if you're Northern English, anyone south of the Watford Gap. I know, can you believe it? Now if you knew me dad, you'd know that he'd always try to get one other and me to speak so-called Queen's English, as he thought it would better us in life growing up. So, being kids, we did the opposite. Now don't get me Pete Tong. Dad was proud of being British and a Londoner, but when we visited London to see my grandparents one time, a London girl, with the broadest Cockney accent you can imagine, had a butcher's at me brother in his pram and said, Oh God, ain't he lovely? And for some reason, Dad thought we should try and speak better. Not a problem with sounding common, but common with a proper pronunciation. Anyway, about that time, or maybe a few years later, Michael Caine was interviewed, and he said how he made the point of not changing his accent just to get work in the acting business. And I thought, I'm not changing either. Why should I? It's part of who I am. If he can do it, then so can I. Obviously, I grew up hearing a few of the more common Cockney phrases, like having your barnet fair cut and getting in a right two and eight, etc. Where does the term Cockney come from? Well, there is literature from the 14th century where the term Cockney referred to the Londoners living by their wits rather than strength. And through the centuries, Cockneys became associated with the working class Londoners. The reference to a true Cockney being born within the sound of the Bow Bells was first noted about 1600 by Finns Morrison in his book, An Itinerary, and confirmed in 1617 by John Michenew in his book, Doctor and the Linguist. So how did Cockney rhyming slang get started? As a nipper, I was told two versions. The first was that the Londoners invented the language when William the Conqueror did his one-time tour of Britain, and they didn't want the Normans knowing what they were talking about, as they plotted schemes against the new conquerors. The second is the same sort of thing, but in the mid to late 1800s, when the East End London Underground didn't want PC Plod to know what they were organising. However, it seems no one really knows how it started. These days, everyone seems to speak Cockney phrases. I think a lot of it may be because of popular TV programmes when I was a dustbin lid. Like the Sweeney, Minder, Only Fools and Horses, Steptoe and Son, and so on. You may have even spoken phrases yourselves, as in, use your loaf, meaning loaf of bread. Are you, making, are you taking the mick, meaning Michael Bliss, or... They need a good kick up the Aris, meaning Aristotle bottom glass, arse. Like all languages, Cockney has developed over the years with several phrases for the same word. Giraffe and bubble bath both meaning laugh, didgeridoo and scooby doo meaning clue. New phrases are also being added all the time. Pete Tong, Barney Rubble, they weren't around in the 1800s. As I've been told over the years, you sound like a Cockney. I listen to how I pronounce words compared to other British accents. For instance, the trouble and strife comes from the Emerald Isle, but she's lived most of her life in Lancashire. So her accent sounds northern to me. Till she loses her temper, then her Irish accent soon rises right up to the service. Anyway, the main thing I notice for me is O-U-N-D-S, pronounced ound, as in round, sound, pound. Similar to how you pronounce O-W-N in down, Brown, town, and so on. 
Caught the bear indoors, the wife. Another thing is, ball sounds similar to bowl, and pool is similar to pool. Like the fun we've had where she's asked me to say sentences, like ball pool, light bulb. The last thing I can think of is you don't pronounce H, as in hands, Henry, and ham, etc. I don't speak Cockney all the time, and I'm not on my Jack Jones. I don't know anyone in the family that does. The odd phrase just comes out every now and then, and besides, I don't know all the Cockney phrases. Only the more common ones that you probably know yourself. If you want to practice your Cockney, then let's have a crack at this. Alright, me old China? Get yourself a cup of Rosalie, and I'll tell you a bit about myself. I live in a terraced cat and mouse, with a trouble and strife, bricks and mortar, and the current buns. It's not a bad drum, although the apple and pears are a bit steep. We live up the frog and toad from London, although you need a jam jar to get to it. Now I'm a common bloke, and I don't like the way I whistle, nor rhythm and blues. I especially hate apple pies round the Gregory, unless it's a scarf to keep the jaw draught out. Now I prefer jeans, t-shirt, and daisy roots, but they do hate me plates. The trouble and strife's are lovely, Richard, and lucky for me, she's not into all that latest clothes pony and Tom Forey, but she does like her barnet being done, and seems to have a fetish for candles. There's another video. I fell in love with her as soon as I clapped mince pies on her, and the old April didn't half skip a beat, I can tell you. Especially when I saw her dollies. I don't know what she saw in me. What with me boat, Amsterdam Eve, jug of beers, and big jazz bands. But here we are, four current buns and bricks and mortar later, after 18 wonderful years of awesome carriage. Well that's it. Hopefully now you know more about Cockney rhyming slang than you did before. Thank you for watching my video. Please leave me feedback, good or bad, your prerogative. And even subscribe to my other videos. I don't own any content of this video, other than my own photo. But this video featured the following. My laptop, Microsoft Office software, Cockney Rhyme and Slang, free images from the internet, free sounds from Sound Bible. If you want to find out more about other Cockney phrases, or Microsoft software, etc, then you can follow the links under the Show Me More. But just so you know, I'm a participant in the Amazon EU Associates program, an affiliate advertising program designed to provide a means for sites to earn advertising fees by advertising and linking to Amazon.co.uk. Thanks very much.